yeah. So we back at it, yeah. You know it. We've been exposing the black Hebrew Israelites that they are Christian, okay? They are, in fact, Christian. And today, you have a special. Today is the type and shadow of Joseph. Joseph is a type and shadow of Jesus, and Jesus is Joseph in the types and shadows. Joseph was the Messiah of Egypt, and Egypt only. Just like Jesus is the Messiah in Islam only. If you wanted to be saved by Joseph, it didn't matter who you were. You had to come to Egypt. Joseph was the Messiah of another land than where he was from. Just like Jesus is the Messiah of another nation than his own. Now, who remembers where Jacob was before he came into Egypt? Now, that's hard. He was in Beersheba. He was in Beersheba before he met up with Joseph in Egypt. So even Jacob, in order to be saved, he had to come to Egypt. Now, on the screen, you can see that Beersheba is southern Israel. So he had to travel all the way to Egypt to be saved. This is a side note. You can only receive Jesus as your Messiah in Islam. Now, hold up. Don't run. Don't run. In order for you to get grain, you had to come and visit who? You had to visit Joseph in Egypt. Didn't matter your status. Didn't matter if you was an Israelite. You had to come into Egypt. Egypt and see Joseph if you wanted to be saved. Jesus is the Messiah of another religion, of another nation, of another people. And he is so merciful, and I'm speaking of the Most High, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that he saved Israel through Ishmael. Okay, he remembered his promise to Abraham, and he's saving all of his children, but you have to come to Ishmael. Jesus is the Messiah of Islam. And I'm going to prove that. I am going to prove that. That's why I want you to share this channel. I want you to pump this truth. Because right here in the house of David, we have the truth that you do not see nowhere else. L -l 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 now let's continue. Now it only makes sense that if you are going to call Jesus Lord then you're calling Jesus Joseph because Joseph was Lord of Egypt. Now, don't get it twisted. When we say Lord, we're not saying God. We're not saying God. We are saying ruler. As it is written in the Hadiths, Jesus will descend amongst us as a just ruler. Now, Joseph was underneath Pharaoh. These two powerful men. One was of the truth, and one was of the fur. <laughs> one was of the lie, okay? Now, this is a picture of Jesus and Paul. But I don't want to hit you with that just yet. That might be a little bit too much for you. Now, this is Aya 120. And each story we relate to you from the news of the messengers is that by which we make firm your heart. And there has come to you in this the truth and an instruction and a reminder for the believers. Now, this is proof that the types and shadows are accurate. You're going to learn for sure, with no doubts, that Jesus is Joseph in the the types and shadows, and that Paul is the wolf. Now, when I started teaching that Paul was the wolf in sheep clothing, I was unaware of the wolf revelation in the Quran. Although I already been teaching that, 
I've been teaching that Paul is the wolf. I've been teaching that Paul is the murderer of Jesus on biblical record. I've been teaching that Paul was the thief from the tribe of Benjamin. And I had no clue that this is all clearly seen in the Quran. Now I'm going to go to Ayah 3 and Yosef. We relate to you, O Muhammad, the best of stories in what we have revealed to you of this Quran, although you were before it among the unaware. Now, I was unaware. When I was in the Israelite camp, I was ignorant. I was unaware of all this truth. I learned all this stuff right here at home in the house of David. And I bear witness that this is so true. The story of Joseph is by far one of the best stories in the Bible. Without the story of Joseph, it would have been very difficult, if not impossible, for me to believe that Jesus never died. It's only because of Joseph's false murder that I could believe that Jesus' murder was false. That's why the Quran says there are signs for those in it who believe. And there is a sign in Joseph. Now, this is going to be Ayah 7. Certainly were there in Joseph and his brothers signs for those who ask. Now think about it. Why was Jesus born supernaturally? Why? Because Jesus is Joseph. And if Joseph would have been the real father of Jesus, then basically Jesus is his own daddy. Now that's too much. That's a little bit too much for you to chew. I'm going to say it again. If Joseph would have been the real father of Jesus, then basically Jesus is his own daddy. Because you know, the Christians say Jesus is God. Okay, so Jesus is his own daddy, according to the Christian, but God Almighty, all-powerful, made sure that Jesus had a supernatural birth so that he is not his own daddy and Jesus is not his own God. Jesus being born supernaturally is proof he is not God. 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 Now we're going to skim through the story of Yosef. You have to read this good stuff on your own. I recommend all people read the story of Joseph in the Quran. We have the same story in Genesis. Some of it's the same. Some of it's a little different. Now this is going to be Ayah 9. Kill Joseph or cast him out to another land. The countenance, attention of your father will then be only for you. And you will be after that a righteous people. You can repent thereafter. So by killing or casting away Joseph or Jesus, the patriarchs, the Israelites, assumed they would be righteous. Just like the Pharisees of Jesus' day. They believed they would be righteous by one man dying for them. Now I want to go to Ayah 13. Jacob said, Indeed, it saddens me that you should take him. And I fear that a wolf would eat him while you are of him unaware. Ayah 14. They said, If a wolf should eat him, while we are a strong clan, indeed, we would then be losers. Now I want to go to Ayah 17. They said, Oh, our father, indeed, we went racing each other and left Joseph with our possessions. And 
And a wolf ate him. Notice I said a wolf. But you would not believe us even if we were truthful. Now, pause. Who was the wolf that murdered Jesus on biblical record? Paul. 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 Paul was the wolf. And I've been teaching this, okay, before I seen this. This is proof that the types and shadows is on point, spot on. All right, y'all, y'all knock it off, y'all knock it off. Paul, the wolf from the tribe of Benjamin. Dang, the wolf is Paul. But in the Bible, it doesn't say a wolf ate him. It says an evil beast, and that's going to be in Genesis 37 and 20 and Genesis 37 and 33, okay? So in our Bible, it talks about a wolf in sheep clothing. Now, I can agree that's an evil beast, but what book is more accurate? The Quran it says a wolf. I love that. Now going on, this is going to be Ayah 18. And notice, I'm skimming through this. And they brought upon his shirt false blood. I like that, false blood. They had stained Joseph's shirt with the blood of a lamb. Now think about Paul. He's the whoopie sheep clothing. Every time it brings out garment, every time it's talking about clothes, it's talking about Paul. And Paul is the one who has the blood on the lamb in his garment. Okay, and I'm going to read that again. And they brought upon his shirt false blood. They had stained Joseph's shirt with the blood of a lamb, but have forgotten to tear it. Thereby arousing their father's suspicion, Jacob said, rather, your souls have enticed you to something. So patience is most fitting. And Allah is the one sought for help against that which you describe. So Jacob knew something was fishy in the Quran. Now, in our Bible, it makes it seem like Jacob was deceived. He didn't know. Okay, but in the Quran, the patriarch, the real prophet, the prophet of the nation of Israel, where Israel came from, he said, you know what? You have enticed yourself to something. Okay? Now I want to go to Ayah 23. And it reads, And she, in whose house he was, sought to seduce him. She closed the doors and said, Come, you. He said, I seek the refuge of Allah. And indeed, he, her husband, Al-Aziz, is my master, who has made good my residence. Indeed, wrongdoers will not succeed. So this is a picture of the Christian church. And I want to keep going before I expound on that. Ayah 24. And she certainly determined to seduce him. And he would have inclined to her had he not seen the proof, the sign of his Lord. And thus it was that we should avert from him evil and immorality. Indeed, he was of our chosen servants. So in the Quran, Joseph would have been deceived if he did not rely upon God. Now, it doesn't say that in the Bible. Going on, Ayah 25. And they both raced to the door, and she tore his shirt from the back, and they found her husband at the door. She said, what is thy recompense? What is the recompense of one who intended evil for your wife, but that he be imprisoned 
or a painful punishment. Ayah 26, Joseph said, it was she who sought to seduce me and a witness from her family testified. If his shirt is torn from the front, then she has told the truth and he is of the lights. Ayah 26, but if his shirt is torn from the back, then she has lied and he is of the truthful. Ayah 28, so when he, her husband, saw his shirt torn from the back, he said, indeed, it is of your woman's plan. Indeed, your plan is great vehement. Ayah 29, Joseph, ignore this, conceal it, and act as if it had not taken place. And my wife asks forgiveness for your sins. Indeed, you were of the sinful. So he's saying, look, Joseph, act like it didn't happen. And he's telling his wife to repent. Ayah 30. And women in the city said, the wife of Al-Aziz is seeking to seduce her slave boy. He has impassioned her with love. Indeed, we see her to be in clear error. Now, Potiphar's wife is the seductive Christian church who is all over Jesus and he has nothing to do with her. Don't want to be bothered with her. Okay? Why? Because she is associating him with God. Now, you got to understand that there was no one greater in that house than Joseph. Because who was Joseph's Lord? His Lord was Potiphar, okay? Now, this is proof that Jesus and Paul is in this thing together, okay? Paul got Jesus in trouble. And I'm going to show you that. There's so many infallible proofs, okay? And Jesus and Joseph is one in the same. Now let's look at the Bible story. Let's look at the Bible account. This is going to be Genesis 39, 11 through 13. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house therein. And she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he let his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth. So I've already given this breakdown yesterday. Potiphar is Paul. Joseph is Jesus. Potiphar's wife is the Christian church. Now the garment was left in Potiphar's wife's hands, not Joseph. So the church today does not have Jesus as their Messiah. They have their Lord Paul. Now, let's go to verse 15. And this is proof that the church is going to continue to have only Paul until the last day. And it came to pass when he had heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me, that's Paul, and fled and got him out. Verse 16, and she laid up his garment by her. So this woman is so gone, she's sleeping with his shirt, okay? <laughs> she got one of them spells on her, and women do this, okay? They, they'll take their loved one's shirt, and, and some people do it, out of good reasons, okay? But she was literally keeping his garment next to her, okay? And that's a picture of the Christian church. Who are they keeping next to them? Paul. All the church has is Paul. Now, you only gonna get this revelation in this house, right here in the house of David. That's why I had to put a face to this message because black people love stealing. <laughs> Okay, people in general 
love stealing. Now I want to go to Aya 70. And I want to show you how Paul is the thief. So when he had furnished them with their supplies, he put the gold measuring bowl into the bag of his brother. Then an announcer called out, Oh, caravan, indeed you are thieves. So just like the Bible, okay, Joseph set up Benjamin, okay, and he put the silver in his sack, okay, and it was a thief that was in the tribe of Benjamin. Now, what tribe, and I need you to come to your mic and say it, was Paul from? Benjamin. Amazingly, Benjamin, okay, so the thief was found in the tribe of Benjamin, and if the kingdom was split, you could say Judah, and you're going to see how that fits in as well. Now, the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. This is in both accounts, the Bible and the Quran. Benjamin was the thief. Now, Jesus was not only warning us about a wolf, but he also warned us about a thief. And Paul was both the wolf and the thief from the tribe of Benjamin. Now, let's get some scriptures in our Bible where we can connect Paul to a garment. So let's get Acts 7.58. Acts 7.58. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. Who? Stephen. And the witnesses laid down their clothes. Uh-oh. At a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Now, let's connect clothes to a garment. Now, let's go to the Merriam Dictionary. Matter of fact, let's go to the Bible Dictionary. Let's go to the Webster's Dictionary, okay? And this is going to be clothes. And it reads, one, garments for the human body. First thing that pops up with clothes is garments. Garments. Now, there was a man by the name of Joshua, whose name in Hebrew is Jesus. There's a man in the Bible who is in trouble with God. Let's go to that story because a lot of y'all, man, y'all so understudy. Y'all don't realize that only the son of men repent. And Jesus was the son of man. And we have a story in the Bible where Joshua is in trouble with the Most High. This is going to be Joshua chapter 7. Verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. So, Somebody stole something. Now, what does the tribe of Judah consist of? If the northern kingdom, okay, is all the other tribes, minus what tribe? Somebody tell me. Judah, the Levites, and the Benjamites. That's right. The tribe of Judah, my brother. Is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So when you say the tribe of Judah, thank you, you can be saying Benjamin. You can be saying Levi. And here we have a thief from the tribe of Judah. And I'm going to prove it. Verse 2, and Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai which is beside Beth-Avon, 
on the east side of Bethel and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men. Three, six, three, six, three, six. For they chased them from before the gate even unto Shabar, and smote them in the going down. Before, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua... Can I say Jesus? Jesus rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face. Wow. I know people that pray like that. Before the ark of the Lord until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, Wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side. So this Joshua wasn't God. He was limited. He didn't know everything. If he knew everything, he would have been like, hold up. I know exactly why we lost. AI, come here. He didn't know everything. He's praying, complaining. Okay, you know how you pray and complain at the same time? This is what Joshua is doing. Verse 8, O oh Lord. So even Jesus has a Lord. Wow. What shall I say when Israel turn up their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around, it means encircle us, and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? Now this is what God Almighty says to Joshua, or Jesus in Hebrew. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon your face? Get up! you cry for get up Israel have sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them for they have even taken of the accursed thing and the Bible says and have also stolen stolen and disassembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy the accursed from among you. Now, that's deep. Now, that's the kind of God I serve. I don't know what kind of God you serve. I serve a God that if he wanted to, he could destroy Christ. He could destroy his mother. No one could stop him. I serve the almighty God with no partners. Verse 13, up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the family
increase thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. So there's sin in the camp of Judah. There's sin in the camp of Judah. There's sin in the camp of Judah. There's sin in the camp. There is sin in the camp. Now, he is talking to Joshua, BKA Jesus, the man that supposedly died for all our sins. And he's saying, look, there's sin in the camp. There's sin in the camp. Verse 15, and it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. I told you, Paul set his own church on fire. He and all that he had, because he have transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he have worked or wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe of Judah was taken and he brought the family of Judah and he took the family of the Zarhites and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man and Zabdi was taken and he brought his household man by man and Akon I'm locked up they won't let me out that is a picture of Paul <laughs> BKA Bulas in the Arabic tongue okay this is your boy. This is the real Akon, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi. And that's his sin. Always talk about the son, the son, the son, the son, the son. That was his sin. The son of Zerah. Okay? And that was the boy who came out with the scarlet thread on his arm. They put the scarlet thread. He popped out first. That's a picture of Christianity. If you know your Bible, you know what I'm talking about. And Scarlet is going into garment. The son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give I pray thee glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession. This is confession time. Confess unto him and tell me now what you has done. Hide it not. From me, there's a huge sin that is so secret because people do not study. And I see the sin. The sin is in the camp of Judah, which is going back to the tribe of Benjamin, your boy, Paul. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils, look y'all, a goodly Babylonish garment. This is your boy Paul, man. God makes it so simple. It's like he made this so simple for somebody in English to catch it. And I caught it. And 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels. Wait. Then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth. See, don't nobody know about this, man. I'm telling you. These Israelite camps have no clue what this is going into. They are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent. This is Paul's church, okay? The tent peg killer, okay? BKA jail, BKA Holofernes, BKA Potiphar, BKA Pharaoh, the fur that's going to see the fire. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran unto the tent and behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his donkeys. Oh, those are the Arabs. Those are the Ishmaelites. He converted 
to Christianity and his sheep and his tent, his church, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, this is the last day, Jesus. He is going to be a witness against Paul's church. He's going to burn it up. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble you this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burnt them with fire. And after they had stoned them with stones, and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. So as you can see, this is a picture of Jephthah, okay? The man who set his own daughter on fire, which is the type and shadow of Paul, who burnt up his own church. He had no son to sacrifice. He couldn't sacrifice Jesus. Allah took him. So what did he sacrifice? He sacrificed his church. And in the Hadiths it say, God will give every Muslim a Jew and a Christian, and he will say, this is your ransom from the fire. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth. We are done. Now it's time for us to get in these scriptures already.